Hi, SEM fellows. It's been a while now since last time we met in a no race. So I hope you are doing well. I'm uh, Oliver from uh, UC Louvain and I'm going to talk about uh, modeling of LPBF surface roughness. So it's not to talk about a mechanical failure, but as you may know, roughness is a critical factor in a fatigue properties and has thus to be uh, addressed. Last time we met, I presented this paper in which we studied the impact of the main process parameters on the vertical roughness. In this work, we used simple structures such as single wall tracks and uh, tin walls to investigate the vertical surface roughness. And one of the main outcome was that to reduce the surface roughness, you better have to use a contour, which is the external part of the samples to process it first and most of all to use a very high energy track density for the contour so the TED which is just the power uh, divided by the scan speed of the laser and as you can see on this graph it allows to reduce the roughness down to uh, 2 microns. So by simply using high energy density for the contours Oh, and I forgot to say that uh, it is on aluminum, silicon, and magnesium. We can easily reduce the vertical roughness. And so for us, the next step was to go a bit deeper in the understanding of what happened here. And for that, we developed a simple geometrical model based on uh, what we observed. And we did that to know how the observed defects contribute to uh, the roughness. And uh, mainly we have the stratification here, which is uh, due to the layer by layer nature of the LPBF process. Uh, this stratification can be enhanced if the melt pool are uh, in uh, stable and this uh, instability, melt pool instability can of course lead to the huge uh, valley and hill we can observe on, uh, on uh, this map. And we also have, of course, a sintered powder all over the sample, which can also uh, increase a lot the surface roughness. Um, we want to know what is the contribution of uh, each of those defects on the roughness and also uh, how it affects parameters other than the roughness average, RA, such as uh, RP, RV, RSQ, and RQ. So first of all, a small reminder of what roughness is in LPBF. This is a topographical measurement of the side mail pool or contouring mail pool. We measure it on a length, which is called the evaluation length, L, and this evaluation length is divided in four, uh, five or more uh, sampling length. A word then on the roughness parameters we studied here. We have RP, the maximum profile peak height, and RV, the maximum profile valley depth, which are simply the min max of the profile, measured separately on each sampling length, and then we take the mean of that. We have the most used one, RA, the roughness average, which is the arithmetic uh, average of the absolute value of the profile. We also have uh, RQ, the root mean square. We will not use it, uh, but we will need it to compute the two following parameters. Uh, RSQ, the profile skewness. This is a measure of the asymmetry of the profile. And the kurtosis, uh, which is a measure of the peakedness of the profile. Those two last parameters are a bit more complicated to understand, so they deserve a small explanation. Skewness and kurtosis are parameters telling you the shape of the amplitude density function, ADF, which gives you the probability of getting an height z across the evaluation length. ADF is the derivative of the material ratio curve, which is the percentage of material you have for a specific cut level. So here, for this specific cut level, you have 0% of material, and for this one, you will have 100% of, ma of material, and so on. Skewness will uh, tell you how asymmetric is the profile. Is it a peak type profile or a valley type profile? A negative skewness means that most of the material is uh, above uh, the mean line mean line, which tells you that you have a valley type profile, and uh, RSQ, RSQ, 
uh, equals to one means uh, a Gaussian profile uh, with material equally spread over the main line. Kurtosis will tell you uh, if your material is well spread over the profile height uh, below three or not uh, well spread over the profile height uh, above uh, three. So those concepts are coming from uh, statistics. So now comes the juicy parts. We modeled the staking of the mail poles by staking together circles as the cap of the mail pole can be uh, approximated by a circle. And uh, of course, on the next uh, layer, most of the cap will be uh, remelted, but it will subsist a small part which uh, will then lead to uh, the stratification. So we did the same by stacking circle and by taking the subsequent remaining parts and then extract roughness value from the pro uh, those profile. So the spacing between circles will be the layer thickness of the process and the size of the circles will be the size of the melt pools, which is uh, computed here by solving the Rosenthal equation. Um, as the size of the melt pool is linked with the track energy density we used, we can then uh, also model the effects of the TED uh, or the, the materials. So, as I said, the width of the melt pools or the circles are given by horizontal equation. We can get more information from that as the length of the tails of the mail pool as well. But in our geometrical model, we will only need the width of the mail pool. So basically, the only difference between one material from another is that at some point, they will have the same mail pool width, but at a different level of uh, TOD. So the um, Curves as a function of the TOD will just have the same trend but will be shifted on the TOD axis. So, to get the basic understanding on how roughness is affected by mail pool instability and sintered powder, we added those defects in the model. For mail pool instabilities, we simply added a random error on the mail pool width and we played with. Uh, this error from uh, 0 to uh, 20 microns. We also added a random error on the um, thickness layer and on the laser positioning. The range of those errors were selected based on what we observed on a sample with a lot of uh, instabilities, as uh, this one here, which exhibits a bowling phenomenon. We also implemented the possibility to add sintered powder on the profiles modeled as smaller single circle with uh, the size of the real boulder, of course. To be sure we created realistic enough profiles, we compare modeled one with experimental one, here on aluminum silicon 10 mg. There are some misfit between the curves, of course, as we are using a random error in our model, and um, we also add here to position the particles at the same places, of course, but the most important uh, feature here is that the profile its span here and here um, have the similar range uh, compared to the experimental profile. Like that, it ensures that we will have a similar uh, roughness value. Let's now play with the model and see the outcomes. Results are presented like this. Error as a, as a function of a TOD here for two layer thicknesses and two materials. Uh, RV and RP are presented as a map, which is much easier to analyze. The hour showing the increasing level of TOD. And uh, same for RSK and RKU. So you have two examples of uh, generated, generated profiles here and their respective uh, amplitude uh, density function. First thing to observe, roughness due to stratification is uh, very small, below 1 micron for 30 micron thick layer. However, roughness uh, increases by uh, increasing uh, the thicknesses, the thickness layer or uh, in, in, uh, decreasing the level of uh, TOD. So the stratification is bad if the thickness layer is large or 
if the male pool are very small. Um, the profile are uh, valid type as uh, LV is always uh, higher than RP, whatever the thickness layer or the material uh, is. And this is confirmed by uh, the negative value of uh, RSK. And as the um, the HDF uh, is uh, as the material is well spread all over the profile head, unless this uh, small pike here, the value of uh, RKU is always below uh, below three. And last thing, as I said before, trends between both uh, materials. Uh, here, aluminum, silicon, 10 mg, and stainless steel here are the same. The curve are just uh, shifted along the TTX uh, axis. So if we take the black curve here, you can just shift this curve here like that. It will exactly give the, the same uh, result uh, because this is a geometrical uh, model. So in the following, I will only use uh, the aluminum, silicon, TEM as a reference material. So what happens now when we had centered particles on those perfect profiles? The x-axis is now the particle uh, density uh, uh, on those profiles. The black curves is for uh, 15 micron particles and the red run is for 30 microns uh, particles. Sintered particles increase roughness proportionally to the particle's uh, density and also proportionally to the particle uh, sizes. This is actually obvious, but at least now we can put uh, some uh, number on this. Another interesting uh, aspect, profiles directly switch from a valid type here to a, a peak type profiles, as uh, LP no greatly increases, which is especially true when the particle density uh, is small. Um, RSK is now positive as we have a peak type profile, and um, RKU takes huge value because the ADF are now very uh, inhomogeneously uh, shaped. We now clearly see the contribution of uh, ear defect uh, here. So the ear, the part from the stratification, which is called here in this work, the primary roughness, and then the part from the particle, uh, centered particle, uh, which is called the uh, secondary roughness here. We had no instabilities, so random random errors on the melt pool radius and the melt pool uh, positioning, and also centered particles. The level of T, the tract energy density, and the layer thickness are fixed here. So the black curves is uh, the reference one without powder, only melt pool instability. And the red and blue, uh, we had uh, different particles population. I encourage you to pause the video here, as there are a lot of information here. Sorry uh, for that. So, without uh, particles, we see that increasing instabilities increase the uh, average uh, roughness proportionally. It increases also both uh, RP and RV, while uh, RV is uh, always uh, larger than uh, RP. As before, adding particles increase uh, RA proportionally to the particle size and density, and it directly turns our valet type profile here to peak type uh, profile here depending on the particle size and uh, density. RSK becomes positive as uh, we now have a peak type profile, as we can see here. Um, and uh, RKU is now uh, la larger also uh, here as we also have a side distribution here in the ADF uh, due to the, the particles. So in summarize, increasing melpool instability increases both RP and RV, while uh, particles only increases 
RP. RA always increases as the profile 8 uh, of uh, those uh, generated profile here always increase by increasing the instability or uh, the, the particular uh, density. Small comment here, we can of course discuss the position of the border as well. Uh, low air Q local to this uh, doesn't always mean that there are no centered particles on the surface as particles can be uh, centered on the, on the valley. So in this case the HDF contribution is then uh, hindered by the main uh, pike here, so this is the, the black curve here, uh, due to the stratification and this uh, will lead to a a lower LQ while on the uh, other cases when the powder will be on the top of the, the valley uh, then we will clearly see the uh, contribution of the, the powder and then it will lead to a really high uh, LQ. So I'm running out of time now but I have to show you experimental data from LPBF samples. Um, here three optimization curves made on different materials. And uh, for aluminum, we have uh, hair hair decreasing with the TOD, then reaching a uh, minimum here, and then hair increasing again. And we, then, uh, we can uh, know, thanks to the model, explain why. So uh, we firstly see that both uh, RP and uh, RV uh, decrease with the TOD, uh, which means that uh, Melpool instabilities decrease. And then uh, only uh, RP here increase with uh, the TOD, which means that the centered uh, powder appears. This is confirmed by the large uh, RQ and RSK uh, value uh, here. And of course, uh, this can be uh, uh, checked by uh, looking at the topographic maps here. And we see that at low uh, TOD, we have a lot of uh, hills and, uh, and valley uh, due to the Melpool instabilities. Then uh, at a lower uh, TOD, uh, at a higher TOD, we have uh, somehow a flat surface here because the Melpool instability decreases. And then the amount of uh, Sintret particle uh, increases at high TOD because of the, the high energy uh, used here. So. Similar command with uh, stainless steel here. We know that uh, here we will have a big issue with the powder as the RP is uh, really high while we doesn't observe that uh, with uh, nickel here unless uh, this small uh, dot here. So um, 15 minutes was my, was a bit short to give you more details about that, but those results are under review now and will be uh, available soon, uh, I hope so. So thank you for your attention.